going to talk on IR calculation in very short and long eyes. <coughs> now, today's cataract surgery has become more of a refractive procedure and our patients expect 2020 with good quality vision. Normally, statistically, it says that an average ophthalmologist gets 78% within plus and minus 0.5. A good ophthalmologist will get 6%, uh, 84%, and 1% of surgeons are at 92%. So it's very important that we go back and do our analysis as to where we really stand. Statistically, again, if you want to hit bullseyes, between 22 and 24.5, this is the normal range. But 2.5 cases are below and above. So 95% fall between 22 and 24.5. So it is said that a crime is a jigsaw puzzle, to solve it, you have to have a jig and you have to have a saw, right? So you need to have both. So what is necessary is to have accurate biometry and an accurate formula in short and long eyes, which makes it even more tricky. We had old instruments and now we have modern instruments. The modern instruments has different calipers and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So accurate biometry is the key. That is part one. So you have optical biometry and intraoperative biometry, ultrasonic biometry, according to me, contact biometry should be banned. You have to do only immersion or optical. These are your only two options. And of course, in, in uh, optical, the best thing to do is swap shows. I'll tell you more details about that as to how it is superior. So normally, if it is, if you compress the cornea by one millimeter on an average eye, you will have an error of 2.5 diopters. In long eyes, you'll have an error of 1.75. And in short eyes, you'll have an error of 3.75. I'm not going to tell you what's a good scan and a bad scan. But as far as optical biometry goes, the swap source, the new one, that is IOL 700, and of course the AL scan, which is from NIDEC Argos, and the Pentacam, which is a Lenstar 900, is better. Now, how is that superior to the other optical biometers which are there in the market? It measures keratometry, axial length, corneal thickness, ACD lens, so you have more variables. Okay, lens thickness, white to white. It ensures foveal fixation, and more important, if you have a posterior staphyloma and you have poor fixation, you have a foveal pit, it is visualized during the scan. If you have a scar at the macula, it is visualized in your scan. So these are advantages of the swap source OCT. Measurement is possible in eyes with denser cataract, and it measures anterior and posterior curvature of the cornea at the same time, which gives you total keratometry. So which IOL formula is the best of them all? So we had the old regression formulas, which is the SRK1 and the SRK2. The Virgil's formulas, which have variable, so two variable, three variable, five variable, and several variable, Bottom line is more the variables you can feed into the formula, the more better is your accuracy as far as your results are concerned. So you can see here that the Holiday 2 and the Barrett takes into consideration axial length, keratometry, anterior chamber depth, white to white, and lens thickness. So if you have put in more variables, there is a good chance that your results are going to be very, very good. The Hill RBF is like the artificial intelligence. All of us feed the data in. The data goes abroad. They calculate, they send it back and they're collecting data of millions of eyes from all over the world. The next future I also feel will be the ray tracing, which is the Olsen formula, which will take care into uh, all the different asphericities, including the cornea, as well as the lens, which is we are going to be implanted. Up till now, what we have been taught that average eyes of 22 and 24.5 is holiday one, short eyes use half a Q, medium eyes use holiday one, and extreme long eyes you can use the SRKT. But the convention teaching goes that the third generation formulas and the two variables are only actual length and keratometry. This is what we have been doing for years. So this is no longer good because we assume that in a short eye, the anterior chamber is shallow, and in a long eye, the anterior chamber is deep. But it's not really true. It's not, it happens in a very small percentage of cases, and this changes your predicted lens position, and that will completely change your end result. So this is a conclusion that is done that anterior chamber size will change from actual length and that will depend on what position your IOL is going to be placed. So special problems in long eyes is that the optical biometers tend to measure the actual length higher and more than 24.5. Hence, the, there is a correction factor by the one cause in actual length modification can be applied in long eyes. And this is the modification factor which will give better results. As far as short eyes are concerned, the measurement impact in short eyes, the lens is much higher in power because if, because the lens is higher, it will take a different reading and that's the reason why your results are going to change. The short eye is more susceptible to small variations in effective lens position and a typical error is unexpected the myopic outcome and the IOL ends up sitting a little more anteriorly and this will change your end result. Conclusion is they have uh, multiple studies, okay? They have taken seven IOL formulas into consideration, the Barrett Universal, the Hegez of a Q, Holiday, Holiday 2, Olsen and SRKT in 1800 eyes. <coughs> and it was concluded that overall, Barrett Universal 2 gives the 
best prediction as far as the uh, variation in axial length is concerned. Same thing result was by the Olsen prediction. So in long and short eyes, the Barrett and the Olsen formula worked the best. Same way there was a comparison between Holiday 1, Hoffer Q, SRKT, Hegis in 69 eyes, and they concluded that Hegis formulas also work reasonably well. So if you see this chart, at the end of it, the new generation formulas, which takes more variation into calculation, the Olsen, the Barrett 2, you can even do the Hill RBF, gives the best results in short and long eyes. In extremely short and long eyes, modern formula gives better results compared, uh, such as the Barrett 2, the Hill RBF, and the Olsen, and the Holiday 2. Additionally, some studies have shown that Hegis is good with optimized A constant with an actual length less than 22 and an ACD of 22.5. To summarize, overall, I feel that the actual length more than 25, the holiday works well. You have to take the adjustment with the uh, uh, WK adjustment that has to be told, which I have said in the presentation, in uh, the end result. To optimize your IL constants, you have to have your SIA, and you have to not remove yourself from the process. So counseling is very, very important. I'll just show one small example. Small eyes can be classified according to anterior lack of time. A patient came to me, a female software engineer. T was 20 by 40 part in both eyes with a correction of plus 12 diopters. On slit lamp examination. So this is slit lamp examination, normal cornea, prophylactic PI done, uh, heaped up optic nerve head, tortuous uh, vessels there. Uh, if you look at, we have done OCT at the macula, we did topography, tomography, wavefront analysis. All this was done. I'm going to go to the conclusion that was 10.7. Her ACD of 2.68 and her lens thickness of 4.27. So a short eye, white to white normal, lens thickness 4.27. Okay. Both eyes. Her so the actual length is 14.84 and the lens thickness is 4.27. One fourth of the lens thick, uh, actual length is the thickness of the lens. And the ACD is very, very shallow and a very, very steep cornea of 57. So I tried multiple formula. It just says out of normal range, okay? Anywhere, you can't put in a 57. You try as many formulas as you want. The length in OD so was 14.8. Multiple range from 49 to 65 diopters, okay? So what are we going to put? So I went ahead. This was a colorist, this is extremely steep cornea. I'm just going to show, I tried everything. So I decided to go ahead. I did femto, a femtorexis, a side port, a microrexis forceps, bimanual IA, a 3.4 millimeter. 65 diopter, highest ever IOL manufactured, was loaded, placed in the cartridge, and then injected. Loaded the hydrophilic IOL. 65 diopter IOL place, this is the post-op result. And I then did surface treatment for her because she was 57 cornea steep. Thank you. And Superb outcome, uh, uh, Kumar. It was really nice. And uh, I'd request uh, Dr. Meena to be ready on the other di on the other podium with a talk on uh, uh, posterior segment pathologies and vitrectomies and eyes. Any questions for Kumar? Kumar, why don't you join us here? Use the, use the mic. Uh, 1.75 with 1.75. Over three weeks, it became minus three with minus two cylinder. And after two months or three months, I did surface treatment, left her myopic 0.75. Today, she's 618 unaided and extremely happy. I think, I think that's an important point because the ELP changes over time. Yes. And that happens time and again with our cases. And we might be disappointed in the first week, but at about three months, you'll see that the ELP has changed and the patients often become emetropic. Because of capsular contraction. Yeah. 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 Thank you.